There are many cool tools out there making Kubernetes easier to work with. There's one that really stands out as almost a must have. It's called K9S. Normally, when you're working with Kubernetes, you're interacting with it through cube control. Now, cube control is great, don't get me wrong, but there's just so much typing involved. Tap completion helps a lot, but even that can be pretty slow. K9S is a terminal UI, or TUI, that lets you interface with your Kubernetes cluster at lightning speeds. So here's K9S. You can see I can navigate around. I can click into any of these pods that I have here. It'll show me the particular containers. You can see one of these was a init container. The other one is the active container. Now, if I hit L, I can check out the logs. Hit Y, I can see the YAML definition. Hit D, describe it. I can use Vim bindings so I can shift G to go down to the bottom, GG to go to the top. And we can check out this top container. We see there is an issue with this. So if I could describe, check out the bottom, we can see that there is a multi-attach error. So that's because if we go to the PVCs, we've now got this read write once. Given that we've got two different nodes, the issue is that I can't have this read write once volume type mounted to two different nodes. Now, if I wanted to, I could hit Control D to delete this. I could even force delete this if I wanted to. Hit OK, and now it's going to spin back up. But as we can see, the node here is still back in the same one. So this is not going to work. So what do we do? Well, I can go to the deploy to see our deployments, and I could actually just scale this down. So I could say replicas two. And now if I go back to the pods, which by the way, you hit colon to open up the prompt here, and I can type in whatever resources I want, whether that be a PVC, whether that be a service, and I can easily navigate around. And you'll see at the top here, we can actually hit zero to see services across all namespaces, one to see this next cloud one, and so on. Very cool. Now, if we go to Nextcloud, one of the things that you want when you have a service like this is to be able to access it. Normally, to port forward, you have to write some cube control port forward command and you have to remember the right syntax. But with just hitting Shift F, I can now tell it, okay, I want to mount the Nextcloud port 80 to local host port 8080. Hit OK. And we can see this cool glasses port forwarding is now on. So if I refresh this page, boom. Now I've got Nextcloud up and running. I can check out this beautiful gorilla. Very cool. And if I want to check out the logs, I can do that. And it's going to show me the logs across all of the different pods. Now, when you've got the logs open, you can hit F, go full screen. You can also do word wrap so you can see everything all in one place, or you can scroll back and forth. You can do timestamps. You can mark. So if you want to see if there's actually progress moving forward, Using a mark, we'll just add a line here and it'll add a visual differentiator. You can also save it, you can copy it, all sorts of good stuff. Now, if we're to go into the pods here, we can see that one of these still has the port forwarding active. And another important thing that you're going to want to do is be able to actually shell into this. This is a very valuable debugging tool. So if I hit S, I'm now actually inside of the next cloud container. So I can see what all I have in here and I could actually modify some files if I wanted. Now, one of the things we have when we're dealing with these different containers is the ability to delete or we can kill by hitting Control-K. That'll just delete it and as Kubernetes, you know, this being a deployment, it will restart. So all of this is super useful. Again, so much you can do here. The other thing you can do is let's say that this particular image is not the right image that we want. So I can come in here and I could say, well, hitting I can change the image. We've got, again, that init container, which is fine, but let's say I want to roll back to Nextcloud 25. Well, I could do that. And as you can see, it's now updated and it's going to kill all those existing containers and it is going to restart the pods with this new image. So if I go to describe, well, we're getting some sort of error here. And the beautiful thing is with Kubernetes, when things go wrong, usually, Go ahead and delete it. I'll force delete for fun. And we'll see a new one is kicking off. This one has successfully attached the volume. This one we can see is not going to succeed because it's on that Y volume. Those are on two different instances. So let's go back to the deploy and we'll scale it down to one pod for now. We've got an error. And so let's check out what's going on. Can't start Nextcloud because the version of the data is higher. Well, very good. So that's obviously not something you'd want to do in any case. 
The other thing that you can do is you can actually check out your Helm resources. So check out what the definition of all the templates are by hitting Y. And you can see all the config that was created. You can also see by hitting V the set of values that were defined. So with this, if I was to just say I want to delete this, this will just do the Helm uninstall and now we'll see that everything is going to eventually spin down. If I want to do a Helm install, I still have to use Helm to do that. Same thing if I wanted to keep control apply. So I can do this and again, now this is set up, but if I come back in here, go into here, and what do you know, it's back up and running. Now another thing that you can do that's quite useful is if you go to a deployment or a service, so if you hit E, this will bring you into your editor. And then what you can do is make whatever changes you want. So in this case, let's say I want to change the replicas to be three. Save it. Well, now I've got three replicas. Beautiful. As you can see, Canon S makes navigating around so much easier. You're still going to need to keep control in Helm for certain operations like installing new resources. But when it comes to digging around in your cluster, nothing beats Canon S. To get it installed, you can use your OS's package manager. Then just run Canon S and you're off to the races. It uses your cube config settings, so there's no need to set up any additional configuration. Definitely give this one a go. All right, I'll see you in the next one.